So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. As I said, we always start off with a little uh, fun and uh, a little James Brown doesn't ever hurt. So, well, good morning and welcome to our 2024 State of the Village for the Village of Woodridge. I'm Mayor Gina Cunningham, and I've proudly lived in Woodridge, which is my hometown, since 1967. Um, it is an honor to begin by first thanking all of you for being here today. Can't tell you how much it means. The State of the Village is always an exciting day for us. Being able to share this special time with all of you um, highlights our village in so many ways, but it's also one of the most favorite parts of being mayor. We shine brightly today, and we thank you for helping us make that happen. First, I'd like to start with some introductions, and we're going to kind of cut back on some introductions only because I could go on, you know me, for over an hour and a half, easy. But first of all, it is my honor to, and I'm going to ask our board members to please stand. This is a village board, and I can't thank them enough for their service and dedication and commitment to you, our neighbors, our community, and our neighbors that are right to the sides of us. Our village works very well with every community around us. We love being a great partner and a great neighbor. So it's my honor to introduce first, Trustee Mary Ann Blair. Trustee Joe Kagan. <laughs> Trustee Mike Krusek. <laughs> Trustee Mike Mahin, I call him Mahin, Mike Martinez. <laughs> Trustee Kay Page. Trustee Jennifer Antilles. Our clerk, Joe Hennigan, is not able to join us today, but he sends his best regards. And also, the person that kind of helps our team so immensely, and, and I'm just adding him right on um, today, right now, is our outstanding village administrator, Al Stonich. Al, who's here today. Al, we thank you for being here. We know you're getting ready for your Olympic, is it skiing? Uh, is that what you're in, the Olympics? Some type of skiing? Okay. Um, anyway, so Al, thank you very much for all that you do to help make all of this happen, um, as well as every day really representing our village so proudly and amazingly. Thank you so much. Our elected officials here, um, and we're just going to read them off because I'm sorry, some may not be here yet, but I want to make sure to um, recognize as much as we can. Chief of Staff for Congressman Foster, Hillary Dank. Chief of Staff for, oh, thank you. for Senator Ventura, Gigi Jabak. We're gonna go ahead and go do all of our DuPage County um, members, but first we're gonna just read off, choose DuPage, the DuPage Foundation, DuPage Health Department, Innovation DuPage, DuPage Convention Bureau. Um, we thank you all so much for being here. Um, and again, if I mispronounce something, please forgive me. Um, our DuPage County State's Attorney is here, Bob Berlin. Thank you very much, Bob. <laughs> Very distinguished um, and grateful that Wheaton Mayor Phil Cease is here. He's also the past president of the DuPage Mayors and Managers. Phil, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Our DMMC, which is a DuPage Mayors and Managers Conference, Executive Director Suzette Quintel is here. The Director of the Will County Governmental League, Hugh O'Hara. And then we also have representatives from IRMA, IPBC, and MGP, all here on their uh, governmental entities that help us do all that we do and support us in so many ways, and we're very grateful. The tables around the room, we do have the Woodridge Park District. We have, <laughs> shout out for them. Our Woodridge Public Library, here. Woodridge School District 99, 68, and 66 are here today. We have our fire district, so we have Lamont, Lyle, Woodridge, and let's see, do we have, am I missing someone? Okay, Darian, yes, Darian, thank you very much. They're all here, so we appreciate, um, thank you very much for being here. 
I'd also like to um, introduce, and this is a special introduction because they're right here at our front table, Zion and her husband, Eddie. And Zion is featured in our video this year. So you'll get to know her and her business, which is Garcia Music. And we have a little announcement because um, in kind of getting to know them just a little bit, um, all of us can maybe congratulate them. They've been married for about a month and uh, they are here today. So we welcome Zion and Eddie. And thank you very much for coming here. Thank you. Like myself, Zion is a Woodridge resident, born and raised here. Yep. So uh, we have so much to talk about this sometime sometime very soon. But thank you very much for being part of our video. And um, I'm, I'm so enlightened by how you uh, talk about starting your business. And there's a theme we have here today um, about building on our dream. So, and I'll explain what that means. And that is the theme that we have for um, this year. Um, anyway, I'm gonna keep going, but I'll promise to come back to that. We do have commissioners, and these are neighbors that serve on commissions for the village of Woodridge. Curtis Nekovar for the Board of Police Commissioners, and John C. Lander, Plan Commission. <laughs> and I do want to make sure um, Woodridge and myself really, um, I, I think, go back to this theme of building on our dream, and, and I'll explain, like I said later, what that means. Um, the helping hands and hearts of Woodridge are truly near and dear to me and, and many, many of us in this room. And um, the Woodridge Neighbors Helping Neighbors Disaster Recovery, um, and, and I should share that still to this day, we have families out of their homes almost three years after the tornado. Um, that hit, hit us on Father's Day in 2021. Um, and these neighbors that are here today um, still um, put their hands together and come together to help our neighbors that really need help the most. So it is my honor to introduce Diane O'Donnell right here in front, Glenn Mazay. And next to Diane is Glenn Mazay. They are the co-chairs and co-presidents of Woodridge Neighbors Helping Neighbors Disaster Recovery. It is a 501c3 organization dedicated to helping our neighbors that are in, impacted by a disaster. So the tornado being one, and then we've had flooding and other things. Um, so I thank them very much. And then we are joined by Debbie Collins and Steph Tarzan, Stephanie Tarzan, um, who are actual case managers working with our neighbors, making sure we help them to fight for everything that we can help them get so they get back home. So very honored to have them here today and wanted to make sure to give a high five for them and um, thank you. And we do have an event coming up on June 26th. More information will be coming out, but it's called a Doing Good Barbecue. It'll be right here um, at Seven Bridges Golf Club. Been very um, honored to have mayors join me. I have mayors that have come together and said, we need to help you. Um, our neighbors, we're going to reach out and try to help. So um, thank you to them. Um, that's going to be called Mayors Helping Mayors. Thanks to Suzette and her team. Um, that's where, how we're able to try to come together and make a difference. So um, we thank you all very much. Um, with that, um, you know, this is a day about celebrating. And we have this great program for you today that highlights how we as a community um, continue to build on our dream. The spirit of building on our dream was originally shared in and about 1959 by our first mayor, Leon Wirch. His heart and vision was all about a caring community, neighbors coming together, joining hands, looking out for one another, and it embodies exactly what Neighbors Helping Neighbors is all about. So today we proudly celebrate his vision in all that we do, and that's because this is who we are. This is who Woodridge is, and I'm very proud to say that and many of our dreams are built. And, you know, I take, and as I look around the room, um, I take great pride in knowing we don't do this alone. It's with every organization, with every person, with every entity and our sister intergovernmental partners especially. So we have a great partnership with the Woodridge Park District. And in 2023, the Woodridge Park District earned a prestigious award from the Illinois Association of Park Districts for their intergovernmental partnership with the Village of Woodridge for Jubilee Point Park. Jubilee Point Park is 44 acres of additional open space to our community 
including many new things. I'm going to cut my speech because Mike Adams will be here, the executive director of the Park District, to share more about what we're talking about specifically. And Mike, you're gonna give us a view here of what uh, the 44 acres looks like. Mm -hmm. And um, we are very, very um, excited about this. So it is my honor to welcome our executive vice president, excuse me, our executive director, Mike Adams of the Woodridge Park District. And Mike, when you're ready, come on up. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to let everybody know that, you know, it's, we're a very unique community. Uh, I serve on an accreditation board with our president, uh, Bill Cohen, on the Illinois Association of Park Districts. And I can tell you by, uh, by far of any other community that we have uh, went and visited and credited, Woodbury has the most intergovernmental agreements that I have ever witnessed. That, that's kudos to everybody in this room. We all work together to make this the best place that we can, be, can be for our constituents. And this is one more shining example to carry on the dreams that some of our forefathers had envisioned uh, back in the 60s and the 70s to make our town center unique. Because we're not typical like a, a, a Downers Grove or Naperville that has a train station in a main street areas. We're more of a bedroom community and we needed an identity. And there was some great vision back from our forefathers, led by Herb Nadelhofer, who recently passed away, to combine all their acreages together in the town center area to come up with a unique development plan and to use nature and open space and parks as being int integral to that overall plan. This is one snapshot of this, a little video that kind of explains what we're going to do with Jubilee Park, but our partnership with the village and all our other governmental entities within that town center is really unique and creative. And we're uh, just glad to be a part of that. So I'll say nothing further and let the video speak for itself. Thank you. Hello, Woodridge. My name is Mike Adams, Executive Director of the Woodridge Park District. On behalf of the Board of Park Commissioners and staff, we appreciate the invitation by our longtime intergovernmental partner, the Village of Woodridge, to allow us the opportunity to present the Park District's proposed Community Park Development Plans for Jubilee Point Park, located within Woodridge Town Center. Jubilee Point Park, a 44-acre undeveloped piece of property, has long been identified as Woodridge's crown jewel by both the Woodridge Park District and Village of Woodridge and therefore has been a long-term goal dating back to 1971 to acquire the property, if not to be developed as a high school, in order to preserve the property for civic, public grounds, recreational, and open space uses. To ensure that vision was passed down through generations, the Park District in partnership with the Village made it a priority to plan for the potential acquisition of the 44-acre property and therefore identified this initiative as a strategic goal in all of the Park District's comprehensive plans, beginning with the Woodridge Park District's first Comprehensive Parks and Recreation Master Plan adopted in 1971. Per that 1971 plan, which identified the property as a critical park and recreation asset for the community, the Park District partnered with Community High School District 99 that same year to lease the property for recreational use. A use that includes but is not limited to the annual Jubilee Special Event, which will be celebrating its 39th year in existence this June. When the opportunity arose to consider acquiring the 44-acre property, the Village and Park District quickly rose to the occasion to once again combine resources to acquire the property, which resulted in a shared ownership agreement finalized in 2012. Subsequent to acquiring the property, the Village and Park District engaged in an extensive community feedback and planning effort in 2014 to finalize a master plan to serve as a blueprint for the future use of properties within town center area and specifically Jubilee Point Park, keeping in mind the community's long-term vision for the property to be used for parks and public grounds, including open space and recreational areas. In anticipation of potential grant funding opportunities in 2022, refinements to the master plan were completed and the Village and Park District agreed it was in the community's best interest to integrate and align control of the property into the mission of the Park District and commit to the Park District's stewardship, management, and programming of the property by transferring full ownership rights to the property to the Park District. 
along with the natural areas management priority and based on securing $880,000 of grant funds to date, the Board of Park Commissioners approved the planning and next phase of park development for Jubilee Point Park to occur at this time. Hello Woodridge, my name is Chris Pollock and I'm the Natural Resource Manager and an ISA Certified Arborist with the Woodridge Park District. The Woodridge Park District is committed to conducting best management practices as a standard of maintenance for park properties. As a good steward of parks and natural areas, the district initiated a natural areas improvement plan that utilizes best management practices to improve the natural areas on the site, which consists of wetlands, prairies, and woodlands. Towards that effort, the district's initial challenge with Jubilee Point Park is managing the extensive amount of invasive, dead, and hazardous vegetation. In an effort to better understand the quality of the existing natural areas, the Park District commissioned a tree survey in 2018. That survey identified the existing natural areas as very low quality, which negatively impacts germination and limits the growth of desired native vegetation needed to achieve high quality sustainable woodlands, prairies, and wetlands, which can support native wildlife. The current efforts, supported by several peer ecological and wildlife experts, is a multi-step process. Step one, remove and treat the invasive vegetation. This step is nearing completion this spring. Step two, remove dead and hazardous trees that may pose a safety risk to park patrons. Once the invasive trees were removed, the remaining trees were inspected and any hazardous trees were felled and removed. Some dead trees were removed while others that were unlikely to impact active use areas were left for wildlife habitat. Tree conditions will continue to be inspected regularly by park staff. Step three, prepare areas for native seeding and plantings. This step is also near completion this spring. Step four, planting designated natural areas with native seeds, shrubs, and trees. Although this step will be addressed in phases over the next several years to ensure park staff has the resources to properly care for the new plantings, the first phase of planting native trees is already nearing completion. It began as an Arbor Day celebration on April 26 in partnership with volunteers from Jefferson Junior High School Student Council and the Davy Tree Expert Company with support from Woodridge Park District staff. The next phase of planting to occur this year will include Park District staff installing a diverse native seed mix this spring. Once seed is installed, it usually takes three to five years for native plants to truly establish themselves and flourish. And finally, step five, implement best management practices through prescribed burns and other ecological methods to improve the overall quality of the natural areas. Prescribed burns may begin in areas with existing vegetation as soon as this year, but will not be conducted in areas that have been planted with new trees or seeds until they can become better established. Hello Woodridge, my name is Jenny Knitter and I am the Director of Parks Planning and Development and the incoming Executive Director of the Woodridge Park District. The district staff work closely with the landscape architect consultant Hitchcock Design Group to create a schematic design plan and cost estimate for the park that aligned with the community's vision defined in the 2014 Town Center Master Plan. Next, the district took the schematic plan and continued plan modifications and collaboration with Hitchcock Design Group, resulting in final design development plans. The intent of this final plan was to balance passive recreation opportunities, such as gardening, picnicking, and pedestrian walking, jogging paths, with complementary active recreation amenities to include a playground, pickleball, and multi-sport courts while also ensuring sensitivity to existing trees, wetlands, and natural habitats on the property. Being in the core of the town center campus, it is also critical that this community park serves as a hub providing accessible interconnectivity to adjacent amenities and remains a good neighbor for other adjacent community services. Now that we have discussed the overall concept plans, let's review the phase two park features. As patrons enter and head east, the first major park feature is the relocated community garden plots, consisting of 59 traditional at-grade garden plots 
and nine ADA accessible raised garden beds. As park visitors travel further into the site to the east, the next major park feature is the picnicking grove. This space includes a multi-story playground with swings and ADA accessible poured in place rubber surfacing. A large park shelter accommodating picnics of 200 people to allow for corporate outings along with large family gatherings and celebrations. To the north of the shelter includes active court spaces with two pickleball courts and a multi-sport court where patrons can play games from volleyball, basketball, futsal, and even ball hockey. Adjacent to the picnic grove to the west is a proposed parking lot to accommodate parking needs for 62 vehicles. Additional shared use parking is located to the east within the village civic space as overflow if needed. Throughout the site, there are 10 foot wide asphalt accessible pedestrian paths that connect park patrons with varying opportunities to explore nature and the built park environment. So now that the final design development is complete, the next step is to submit a traffic study and development plans for village review and permitting. Upon receiving any village comments, final plan modifications will be made and construction documents will be completed. The project will then be bid this summer with construction estimated to begin this fall. Construction will continue through the winter and completion is anticipated in summer of 2025. On behalf of the Board of Park Commissioners and staff, the Woodridge Park District is very excited to be a part of building on our Woodridge dream by cultivating connections to nature, fitness opportunities, and the community to ensure improved physical and mental health and wellness in Woodridge. Very exciting. We are um, blessed to have uh, such great teamwork with the Park District. And I'd like to invite Mike, Jenny, and Bill um, back up because we'd like to just send a nice thank you and also the village board for the village of Woodridge. It's always great to start off the morning with something so wonderful like Jubilee Point Park discussion. So thank you for all the hard work and um, together both boards work together to make this happen and um, you know, not only is this beautiful, it's something that we can look forward to for many, many years in the future, but we also thank the working together, um, the partnerships that we have, and being able to um, recognize and honor um, this wonderful partnership. So, and we talked about a little bit about building on our dream, right? That's what this is about. That's what we keep talking about today, and I'm thankful that the Village Board is here with us along with um, the Park District, and we do have more members of the Park District here with us. Um, I don't wanna leave anyone out, but um, Mike, you know, you've helped us through a lot. Um, you've helped us create so many wonderful amenities in Woodridge, um, and to build on so many dreams that we've had and you've cultivated and that we've all shared, right? We can look around Woodridge and say, uh, there's that's Mike's hands were there. Mike, Mike helped us create this. So um, for those of you who don't know, Mike is um, retiring this year from the Park District. And um, we want to honor and say thank you, Mike, for your 34 years of outstanding service and dedication and honestly going above and beyond in all that you do. Um, so we, we thank you, Mike. Um, and I know you would never want us to do anything like this, so I know. <laughs> but just a little bit more about Mike. So as I said, Mike um, on June 30th is retiring. Uh, Mike joined the Park District in 1990 as the district's first landscape architect. He was qu quickly promoted and named the first superintendent of planning and development, followed by the first deputy director and then the second executive director in Woodridge Park District history. During his time with the Park District, Mike has helped to plan and design Mending Wall Park, the building on, um, and actually expansion of the James Avenue Park, um, and uh, the sports complex, which we call the ARC, the Athletic Recreation Center. So we finally call it the ARC. Um, he expanded and helped direct the expansion of Cypress Cove Aquatic Park, the Hobson Corner Park Splash Pad, and tickled by pickleball over there, um, <laughs> truly. Um, and Mike, you've done so much, and it is in the spirit 
of um, on behalf of the village board the community as a whole Mike that we are naming you a recipient of our building on our dream Award. so it is our honor as a village board and I'll share that mic and we'll get you up over here to get some pictures um, Mike would you mind taking that for me thank you very much I know we're surprising you with this but <laughs> special guests here um, and we'd like to have them come in um, there we are come on over Mike's family is here it's not easy to pull something off on Mike Adams let me just say thank you so much for being here hello welcome hi yes. we're so happy you're all here and we're so just really graced by being able to recognize Mike um, on this wonderful occasion to be able to say thank you to Mike. Um, and, and really, we'll talk a moment about um, what it takes because we don't give the Building on Our Dream Award out. I think this is the 11th time we've done it in our history. So as I alluded to earlier about uh, Mayor Wirch and his um, statement and vision about being a caring, good community, this is right where it starts, right? Right here. So Peggy, that's for you because there's always someone right behind the key person here. So um, let me just say a few words and then Mike, I'm gonna ask you to maybe say a few words if you're okay. Okay. So, so it truly is an honor um, to recognize and celebrate Mike for his exemplary um, contributions, which embody our community pride, care, and the spirit of Woodridge. Mike, like others who have received this award, always go above and beyond. That's the first thought that comes in their mouth. There's no ordinary efforts. And people who know Mike know that. And they are worthy of a community-wide recognition and truly our heartfelt and heartfelt gratitude. So Mike, maybe you could introduce your family and forgive me um, first off and maybe say a few words and we all would thank like you. to congratulate you, Mike. Thank you, thank you. And this is a Th surprise, he had no, no idea. No, <laughs> no clue. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Village Board. Uh, very humbled. Um, I'm having a little bit of a deja vu experience here. Um, I received an award from our association uh, about four years ago in front of about 4,000 people at attendance. And when you're announced through the award like this, you have about five seconds to get your thoughts together. And I was going up, I'm just telling myself, don't forget to thank your family. Don't forget to thank your family. And what did I do? I forgot to thank my family. So tonight, today, I want to introduce my lovely family. I'm so proud. Um, my wife, best friend, Peg, um, you have celebrated our recent anniversary on April 1st, April Fool's Day. So I always, <laughs> always got a caveat if I need it, but no, thank you. And I'm so proud of my three uh, public servant kids. Uh, I have two teachers here, one special ed who teaches at Jefferson Junior High, uh, my oldest daughter, Caitlin, who teaches at Lyle High School, and my son, Matt, who uh, works as a public uh, maintenance employee with the Park District. Couldn't be more proud of it and to be able to give back to our community that we so much fell in love with. Um, you know, with all our intergovernmental party, par, uh, partners, especially the village of Woodridge, um, you know, it's building on our dreams. We had a lot of dreams for this community. You know, we're a smaller community compared to some of our neighbors. And as Fred Honky always used to tell me, why can't we have what those other communities have? And that was always kind of been my dream, to provide as many opportunities to improve everybody's quality of life through, on our end, parks and recreation. And to have our partners with the village and the school districts and the library and the fire districts and our police department, we always, we always come to a final conclusion to do what's best for our community. I know we've had you know, challenges and disagreements, right, Al, every once in a while? <laughs> but you know what, to me, that's, that's healthy. That makes what's for a good, good community, to have good debate, 
Uh, but we were always professional in our debates and our discussions, and at the end of the day, we did what's best for our community. Couldn't be more proud of everybody in this room to be able to partner together. Thank you for the award. This is an award for everybody. My leadership team, my management team, and most of all, our park board, who uh, you know, really take the advice that we give them to make important decisions, and couldn't be more proud. Thank you very much for everybody. speech but uh, I think you've you've heard a lot about Mike and uh, I'll, I'll give him the speech that he can look at later today <laughs> but uh, just you know I I, I want to say uh, uh, from uh, from the park board from the staff uh, we, we are so intensely proud of what Mike brings to the table his uh, work ethic his professionalism his integrity his character uh, I could go on about you know him but um, I think you saw it you saw it in how much uh, he deeply cares about this village I mean he raised this beautiful family here uh, it's you know they've, they've certainly um, adopted Woodridge and, and are gonna stay here and uh, thank thank you to uh, his kids he's got uh, grandkids that uh, he's, he's expected well at least you know got one uh, <laughs> that, that he'll be bringing around uh, to uh, to all, all this work that he's uh, put in and that we all get to enjoy by being residents of uh, Woodridge. He's, he's just given us incredible value. Uh, love how he has uh, prepared things f to segue into uh, Jenny Knitter, our third uh, Park District Executive Director, um, to take over when, uh, when he finally uh, gets that uh, rest and, and, and a well-deserved retirement. So um, yeah, we, we, we love the guy. We uh, couldn't be more proud of uh, what he has done and uh, the state that he has uh, put us in. So. Congratulations, Thank well you. deserved. Thank you. Remember, take time for fun. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, and congratulations again to our park district, um, the entire team, and the board. Um, as I said, this is a wonderful partnership, and uh, I knew if we tried to plan anything in recognizing Mike, he would not attend. So today was the day. So very uh, happy that um, we were able to share this uh, time together with Mike. So as you can probably tell, our theme is, again, um, celebrating and um, really uh, celebrating where we've come from and where we're going. That's going to be big be the big celebration for today. So as we look to our future, first I'd like to look maybe a little bit back. So in October, we opened our new state of the art police department and public works building, or facility, excuse me, getting ahead of myself on the public works building. Um, but we're so excited. Um, we unveiled our building um, for our new police department, as I said, in October, and it was absolutely incredible. Um, to walk through the building um, and see the new home for our police department. And we are graced today by the Woodridge Police Department. And um, so I'm just going to skip to it because I'm going to go through my speech and cut out a little bit here. But we're celebrating the facility itself, the new home for our police department, which is 31,000 square feet. Um, it includes a community room, open space for our officers and team to collaborate and gather, as well as we celebrate going green with the installation of geothermal heating and cooling systems, which will result ultimately in lower costs to uh, all of us here in this room. But it is an outstanding building, and we also look forward to welcoming our public works building. Um, we just voted on um, in, in this year to build a brand new public works uh, facility as well. On the campus, as I'm calling it, of the police department and public works, so you will find right now Salt Mart, the new indoor outdoor material and equipment storage facilities, and all of that is fully operational today. So they're already hard at work in their new building. Our police department has been working diligently to keep our community safe, number one goal. 
our police department completed 2,709 extra patrols. They enhanced our full-time social worker program to reach out to our community and those underserved in our community. They received a 125,000 retail theft grant through the Illinois Attorney General's office. And with this grant, the Woodridge Police Department purchased additional license plate readers, LPRs, which are cameras. And they not only help us to deter retail theft and crimes in our community, but they also help us bring criminals to justice, as we know recently just happened in Woodridge. At this time, we would also like to make a very special announcement. We are excited as a community and very proud to announce that just last week, we made our selection for our new chief of police. And he is in the room today. Um, he is currently one of our two deputy chiefs, and it is my great honor to introduce our new chief of police, Thomas Tom Stephenson. Tom? We congratulate you, Tom, and we thank you for all your years of service, and we look forward to great many years ahead. Thank you so much. We celebrate that with you. And again, we're going to do a quick um, thank you to the teams that helped us get to this beautiful building in Woodridge, and that is our construction teams, I know, and, and others that helped us. So V3, um, we thank um, you all, CCS International and Harbor um, contractors who are all here today. So thank you very much for helping us get our dream fulfilled here in Woodridge. In addition, um, just one thing I wanted to mention about Tom. Um, yesterday we hosted the village of Wilmette or city of Wilmette um, who went on tour of our new police department. And it was an honor because I'm happy to say that um, on Saturday, May 18th, we will be having an open house dedication of our new building um, from 9 to noon on Saturday the 18th of May. That's where we all have a chance to go through the building, take a tour, enjoy some fun activities for the family. There's something really for everyone, but we hope that you can join us um, as we celebrate this wonderful addition to our community. And um, Tom, I know you'll be leading uh, the team that day, so thank you very much for all the hard work, um, as well as to everyone in the village who makes all this ha happen. Um, their helping hands are all over. So I thank everyone very, very much. Um, so we have been busy. So in 2023, uh, the uh, Public Works Department, I want to add, just completed $2.8 million in roadway improvements. And they are finishing a $3.5 million water main replacement project. And we've also kicked off our $3.8 million Woodridge water meter replacement program, which will replace over 9,000 devices with new smart meters in all residential, commercial, and industrial areas of Woodridge. And we are very excited, as I said, to look forward to the start of construction of our new public works building in 2026. So much to celebrate there and um, you know, we're excited as a community of what's ahead. And we want to thank you for helping us make it all happen. With the help of our Public Works Department and um, our, I always get choked up on this, I'm sorry. It's something very near and dear to me. Um, it is regarding our preservation and respect and love of trees in Woodridge. Woodridge is a Tree City USA community. We have trees throughout our community and actually driving through yesterday, I saw lots of new trees waiting to be planted. This means so much. Um, I, I can't help but share that uh, when the tornado came through Woodridge, we lost a lot of trees. So one of our goals was to work very quickly with the Morton Arboretum and other organizations to start looking at replacing and replanting and going even more green. So with the help of our Public Works Department, and the dedication to preserve our urban treetop canopy, canopy, boasting an inventory of 10,000 parkway trees throughout our community, we received the award again for the 33rd consecutive year. Woodridge has been named a Tree City USA community proudly, 
And we are among a very small group of cities, only 15% of all cities in the nation to be exact, that earned a growth award for going above and beyond the standards of a tree city community. So I'm very proud of our community in that. Thank you very much to our Public Works Department and everyone who helps us. It's a way to grow and way to stay green in Woodridge. I want to highlight our finance department, um, which is continuing to build on our community's legacy of responsible stewardship of taxpayer dollars, which continued again in 2023 and is already hot at work in 2024. In 2023, we were awarded the Government Finance Officers Association Triple Crown Award. This is one of the most distinguished finance awards available for governments and recognizes governments that have received an achievement in excellence in financial reporting, popular annual financial reporting, and budget presentation. The village's strong financial position and responsible fiscal management is also recognized annually by the national bond rating agencies for our highly ranked credit worthiness. Thanking John and team here from our finance department. I know you've got much work ahead, but we thank you very much for your dedication and all your great works. Thank you to our finance department team. Another goal of ours is to continue to inspire community engagement, a key area in Woodridge. And coming out of COVID, um, that made it a little bit hard, but we are very much um, out there and uh, you'll see us all over. We just hosted our um, coffee with the mayor and village board recently, which we had to take a little sabbatical from, but um, I'm excited to say that we're back. In addition, in 2023, our Human Relations Advisory Committee, or HRAC, led us in celebrating the diversity of our community and brought us together for new engagement programs, such as the inaugural Diwali Festival of Lights celebration that saw over 200 neighbors um, coming together to take part in this wonderful celebration. We thank the HRAC and Debbie Collins is a member of the HRAC who's here today. We thank you and your team of neighbors who really are dedicated to sharing so much. Um, and you have a wonderful partnership uh, with the village, but also with the library. Um, and thank you, Patty, for all the good works and helping us and your entire team for making dreams come true for all of us to celebrate the diversity of Woodridge. Um, and we look forward to many, many um, other um, wonderful engagements that are coming forward. So there's a special recognition that does not fit into the script, but I must do this. Um, and again, this would be a surprise to this person, but I'd like to share, and I'm very proud of our team at the Village. Um, and it's a perfect time to highlight one very special person who, as I said again, does not know that I'm doing this. So. Forgive me, please. Um, but this is so um, deserving for us to recognize her. She sure wouldn't want us to do it, but we must. And I can't help because there's so much to highlight, but I'm gonna stick to one recognition for Peggy Halleck. Peggy, where are you? Peggy? Is she she's outside? Saying, she's okay, we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> ask her. She's working. Is she running towards the door? <laughs> So Peggy is our assistant village administrator. She's hiding. Oh, oh, there she is. I'm looking this way, Peggy. Hi, Peggy. Come on up, Peggy. May as well. Come on over. Just make sure you don't run out the door. <laughs> we timed the rain perfectly. And I know you would never want us to do this, but one of those things I think that is important to <laughs> highlight. <laughs> so Peggy. Thank you so much for all that you do with the village. But you know, last year you were honored with something, being named the president of the ILMCA. Am I saying that right? ILCMA. I ILCMA, yes, thank you. Would you tell us what that is, Peggy? It is the Illinois City County Management Association. Right. Peggy is, um, was elected as the president of that organization. She's also been part of the organization for 30 years, but she was voted in by her peers. And there's a diverse group of peers. Um, and we are honored by um, her service to the organization as well as her peers. 
and we wanted to recognize you today to say thank you very much for always again going above and beyond okay. and um, it means so much and I know you would never say anything to any one of us here that you were president but we thought it was important for us to recognize you and say thank you so much and yeah. I know you're doing a great job so thank you thank you, very thank much. you so much I meant to say that correctly, the ILCMA, but as I said, she's been a mentor and a member for many, many years, and just important for us to recognize and highlight um, all of her uh, wonderful efforts and uh, the heart for doing all that she does. Oh, I think the microphone might be coming back a little bit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, also, other engagement programs that we had were the Police Department's National Night Out event, which hosted a record-breaking turnout of over 500 neighbors. It was incredible. Um, and then the special Andy Warhol art exhibit, which was in art, we honored former Mayor William Murphy and Fred Honke of the Park District, posthumously. Um, it was so important us, for us to um, highlight in art, um, in addition to Mayor Murphy and Fred, um, Ann Banks, um, Jano, the Janes Avenue Neighborhood Outreach, um, and then Barbara Smith from the West Suburban Community Pantry. Founders in a way in our community that really help us to live that dream fully. Um, they always give, so um, all represent outstanding leadership in our community and have definitely built on our dream. So it was an honor to work with Patty in the library um, to bring this art exhibit to Woodridge and highlight uh, some of our history in Woodridge. We're very proud of that. Thank you, Patty. Um, also, uh, in that event, they raised over 1,000 pounds of food, which was donated to the West Suburban Community Pantry. It was something I love. When we do something, and Jamie and Patty, when we do something so wonderful like an art program and then put a good purpose behind it, where when you're coming to see the art exhibit, please bring something to help someone else. So we thank them very much and very, very um, grateful for the for all the good work. So this year, um, we are also celebrating as a village. It is our anniversary this year, 65 years as a village. On August 25th, we will look forward to many fun events this summer and opportunities for our community to join together and um, celebrate. Recently, we brought back again our Mayor Board Coffee Program, which gives both businesses and residents, our neighbors, a chance to come talk to the Village Board, talk with each other. It's a great way to connect. And also, um, it just uh, really, I think, um, helps us to hear what's on the mind of our neighbors. And then I think, in the end, always helps us do a better job, right? So I'm um, very grateful for that, for the connections. Some other um, engagement opportunities will be, um, again, our Police Department and Public Works Campus Community Dedication on Saturday, May 18th from 9 to noon. We invite everyone to please come out and join us, take a tour of our new, new Police Department um, and Public Works facilities. Um, we're also going to um, have lots of fun things for families and, and our neighbors. In June, the highly anticipated Woodridge Jubilee returns. And in July, we can look forward to our usually very, very um, highly attended 4th of July picnic, uh, which is put on by our Woodridge Special Events, led by Trustee Joe Kagan and uh, the Special Events team. And of course, there's a nice fireworks show here in Woodridge, which we are a partner with Downers Grove and Darien to bring fireworks to the entire area. Um, also, we are excited to bring a Woodridge Restaurant Week to our community to help our businesses. Um, so, lots of uh, great things coming ahead, and I hope that you'll please sign up for our Village E-News so you can stay connected to us um, and uh, also um, know what's be in the know, I guess is probably a good way of putting it. So, very proud of Woodridge, not just on what we have built, but where we are continuing to build. And it is my pleasure now to introduce our 2024 State of the Village video. In this year's video, you will hear from our four of our local businesses that have achieved their dreams in Woodridge and who are continuing to build on those dreams right here. I hope you'll enjoy hearing about their perspectives and their stories, and I hope that you too will continue to build on your dreams right here in Woodridge. Welcome to Woodridge. 
where we are proudly building on our dreams and have been since August 24, 1959. Located approximately 25 miles west of downtown Chicago, we sit at the crossroads of opportunity with prime access via I-55, 355, and Route 53. Woodridge is a strong, resilient community. We prioritize connecting our neighbors and celebrating our diverse village. My name is Maria Kemp, and I am the owner and partner of Zoop in Woodridge. Zoop is a fast casual restaurant. We serve over 100 soup recipes, 10 of them rotate a day. We have amazing grain bowls, amazing salads. Our sandwiches are delicious, and we sample. That is the best part of Zoop. The community is amazing. The people here are so welcoming, and the village of Woodridge has been so amazing with helping us out, and the customers have become like our family. Hello, my name is Dan Costello. I'm the CEO of Homer and Pizza. Today I'm actually sitting in our manufacturing facility. It's about 80,000 square feet. This is our home base where we now produce all of our frozen pizzas that go across the country. I think, you know, my uncle's vision when he came out here was to be in an area that we could expand and grow our business. For us, for our freight and our trucking, that's invaluable. I think we're in a great spot. Incorporated in 1959, with fewer than 500 residents, we are now over 34,000 and growing. Over the last year, we welcomed 14 new single family homes, $45 million in new commercial multifamily construction, and more than 17 million in new residential development. Hello, my name is Basil Hassan. I am the regional manager of the North Region for The Room Place, and we are here at our Woodridge location. The reason we selected Woodridge as a premier site is because of the visibility of being near 355. That definitely helps us drive more traffic and it doesn't hurt when you have other competitors that bring cross traffic into our stores to allow us to sell those customers. And it is a large community and a growing community and we pride ourselves in, in being able to be in communities that are gonna serve our customers' needs. And we've done it for over 100 years and we look uh, forward to doing it for the next 100 years for the Woodridge community. We're building partnerships to bring new events, road improvements, and parks to Woodridge, such as Jubilee Point Park, which will offer 44 acres of additional open space through our intergovernmental partnership with the Woodridge Park District for a new community park, balanced with the preservation and improvement of existing natural areas. We're building on our past, too. In the fall of 2023, we opened a state-of-the-art police and public works campus, featuring a community room, salt barn, and cold storage. By 2026, we plan to start construction on our new public works building. We're building our business community as well. Not only is the village of Woodridge like family to us, we are a family owned business. My daughters were six and eight when we first opened and now they actually work here. Having been a teacher for 10 years, it's amazing working with students and young people. We've had so many students who started when they were 15 and now they are in their 20s and they come back as customers with their family. And it's just so lovely to see them. In the past year, we welcomed 18 new businesses to Woodridge including The Room Place, a Chicagoland-based furniture store, Mint Vision, a new eye care provider, The Salt Suite, designed for relaxation, and the Garcia Music Academy to inspire our youth. My name is Zion Garcia, and we are at Garcia Music Academy, where I am the instructor and the owner. I grew up here in Woodridge, and growing up, there wasn't a lot of music schools or piano teachers. So I just decided might as well open a music school in the community I grew up in. And ever since I relocated here a year ago, it's been great and growing. Garcia Music Academy has really provided a inspiring environment for my son to learn music. Mrs. Garcia is awesome, the way that she works with the children, and we highly recommend this business. I guess I'm just very proud to be a part of the community and 
have something valuable that I can offer to the families here at Woodridge. In Woodridge, we're still building dreams. And we know we have work to do to continue building our dreams. Our village board is taking hard work to build for our future. Our community can look forward to a street TIF qualification report for 75th Street, a comprehensive plan update, and a three-year economic development strategy coming soon. We want you to build your dream with us too. Whether providing holistic care to animals like Finan Animal Hospital, offering transportation and logistics services close to I-55 and 355 like Trammel Crow, or inspiring laughter and fun through pickleball. You can build your dreams right here in Woodridge. Yeah, so the grand opening was a, a proud moment for the organization simply because we had all of our retail partners here as well as uh, community members. And it was a really exciting time for us to do our ribbon cutting ceremony. It was definitely a proud moment for us as a company. We're also building homes and expanding housing choices like the River's Edge subdivision with 45 acres of land directly north of Seven Bridges, which will bring 48 new townhomes and 62 new duplex units to our village. And the towns at Farmingdale with 14 new multifamily buildings, totaling 77 new townhome units at 8405 Woodward Avenue, right next door to the Farmingdale Village condominiums. Everyone is welcome to build on their dreams in Woodridge. I didn't think I would go into this business just having grown up in this business, although I love being in the restaurant environment and training staff, having customers with a bright smile, it's very rewarding. I think I'm excited that I could just have some sort of contribution to the area that I grew up in. I just wanted to be a piano teacher teaching out of my home, and now I'm at a storefront and that it's way more than I could have ever imagined. Our Human Relations Advisory Committee champions diversity, equity, equality, and inclusion in Woodridge, providing opportunities for dialogue and engagement and increasing inclusive community connectedness in a meaningful and sustainable way. In 2023, the Human Relations Advisory Committee led us in celebrating the diversity of our community and bringing us together through new community engagement programs, such as the November 12th, 2023 Diwali Festival of Lights celebration. Our purpose is to gain love from our community which means we have to be active in our community. As effective as we try to be in our manufacturing, there's three or four pizzas out of every thousand that we will term as, you could call them dingers or misfits. We will, throughout the course of the year, run dock sales. What we do with the portion of the proceeds is that we actually donate it back to the food pantry. Customers, many of them directly from the Woodridge community can come and get a discounted product. So we're able to use these misfits to actually make a, a better community impact. Come build with us, dream with us, and know that we're here to help. Working with the village was really a privilege for our organization to move into this space. We worked together to put the plans in motion and we're, we're finally here and we're really excited about it. The stories that my uncle relayed is like, you know, he was looking at other communities, but I remember how pleased he was in terms of the welcoming feeling, how easy it was, you don't just do this without the village embracing you and welcoming you. It made all the difference. We're granting over $80,000 in shopping center reinvestment to Hobson Plaza. And we're modernizing our zoning codes to meet the ever-changing needs of our business community. We take great pride in being named a nationally recognized SoulSmart designated community for our efforts to encourage investments in residential and commercial solar energy projects. And for preserving our trees as a Tree City USA community for 33 consecutive years. Building a better, beautiful, and more sustainable world for us all. We're celebrating 65 years of Woodridge 
celebrating our business of the year, Donut Co. and Bakery. Located at 2019 87th Street, where they bake their delicious donuts, coffee cakes, and pastries with love. We're celebrating our community and what's still to come. We've grown a lot, but we're not done growing yet. The village of Woodridge is very warm and welcoming and is definitely a great community to be a part of. I would definitely say come and join the community here in Woodridge. Uh, they are welcoming and very supportive. Come check it out. I mean, if you need to move your product around and get your people to work, it's a great spot. And then when you have business challenges and you need a partner, Woodridge would be a good choice for those people. Some feedback I would like to give to a business that's looking to come into Woodridge and do business is take care of your customers because they are going to be the foundation of your growth and being in Woodridge that has allowed us to achieve our goals as an organization. It is definitely a strategic move for any business to find a space in Woodridge and to serve the community. This is Woodridge. Come build your dream with us. Build your dream in Woodridge. 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 Well, we hope you enjoyed the video, which illustrates how we continue to grow in Woodridge. And yes, we have more work to do, but um, we know we try so hard and we remain the perfect place for both business and families to build, dream, and celebrate. I now I'd like to welcome our Village of Woodridge Community Development Director, Kimberly Clark. Kimberly is, has been very busy, let me just say, um, and you'll hear more about all the uh, actions going on and activity in our Community Development Department, led by Kimberly and her team. So Kimberly, I'm going to invite you up and uh, please uh, take us through all you've been working on and thank you very much. Thank you. All right, good morning. I will use my loud voice as I see our microphone is still a little on the quiet side. So good morning and thank you everybody. This has been a great, um, a great morning so far and thank you Mayor. Um, it is my pleasure to speak to you all this morning. I'm Kimberly Clark, I'm the Community Development Director and I will be approaching my 19th year this June in doing the job that I love every day which is working in communities, bringing businesses and organizations together and all to create a great environment that we call our neighborhood, our community, our home. Uh, I've been in this DuPage area my entire life, so when the opportunity came to be closer to the area I grew, grew up in, I jumped on it because Woodridge has always had a great reputation in my field, and um, I'm very honored that I was chosen to represent this community and continue to work with you all every day. Um, every day is a different day and that's one of the best things I love about my job. So uh, my role again is just to oversee the development services uh, which comprise economic development, planning and zoning, building and code enforcement. These three divisions all work hand in hand to ensure that our community is growing with quality and um, developing um, our businesses in our community. This is my second state of the village um, here in Woodridge, but my first time presenting to you all. Um, it's been an honor getting to know and work with many of you. I see some of our businesses here today um, celebrating their one year anniversaries and I got to be a part of that. So I look to continue those relationships um, and, and watch you grow. Um, but this past two years has been great. Um, therefore, it's my pleasure to share the Community Development Department's 2023 highlights. So in order to build on our dreams for the future um, of our community, it's important to have a solid foundation. In the Community Development Department, that foundation is supported by the codes that regulate development. And in 2023, the Village Board successfully adopted a new comprehensive update to the zoning code. This is not a small task. Um, and unfortunately, it did see a lot of starts and stops due to some national issues going on. Um, but the village board and the staff continue to move it forward inch by inch. This zoning code is important 
because it is the primary tool for our department to guide future reinvestment in our community. We now have a code that is more aligned with current zoning practices, which will make processes and interpretations more efficient for all. In addition to our zoning code, our building code was adopted to reflect the most recent version of the international building codes. We were one of the first communities in our area to adopt the 2021 codes so that we can remain up to date with the new technology and construction trends that continue to evolve within our fields. Next, 2023 was a year of adjusting back to normal. The stable growth we saw in the, in the video, we had approximately 45 million in commercial and multifamily reinvestment, which is historically our average for the past 20 years. And we also saw the construction of 14 new single family homes, which is down from last year, but more aligned with our historical average growth. We will expect to see some additions in our community with some new construction for the next five years, due to two national builders, MI Homes and Pulte Homes, who will have chosen to build in our community. <coughs> this slide shows the MI Homes new infill townhome subdivision off of Woodward Avenue. The project was approved in 2023 and has kicked off construction this spring. This development will bring a total of 77 new two-story townhome units in a mature area that will be attractive to new home buyers. This property has been sitting dormant for several years and we are happy to see that M&I Homes is bringing new life to the area. Next is the River's Edge subdivision by Pulte Homes. We mentioned this at la the last year's State of the Village as it was under review. However, the project has received its entitlements for the annexation and zoning this past winter and they are before the Village Board on May 16th for final plan approval. <coughs> Excuse me. This multi-agency partnership involved intergovernmental agreements with the Village of Lyle, Lyle Park District, IDOT, and Woodridge. It was a fun project, to say the least. Anything you can throw at it, it, it was there. But this will be about a four-year build-out um, of townhomes, uh, commercial um, in the front along Route 53 that will be developed by others. And then we have our duplexes, and this was a direct response to the village responding to the developer and asking what it is we needed in our community and we have a need for some additional attached housing that is allowing more people to um, to allow the, the single story and, and maybe age in place so they responded and they're providing and we're getting already a lot of interest and feedback people looking for this type of product so we're very excited that we had a partnership in Pulte and bringing a housing product that our community members were saying they needed. But what makes this project really unique is the partnership, and that is with the public infrastructure. There's a lot of wetland floodplain encumbering this property, which made it difficult, but however, Pulte and the village did work in coming to some public benefits, which will be a future park in the village um, of the Lyle Park District, in addition, uh, there is a much needed pedestrian path connection along Route 53 that will be provided along Route 53. In addition, a bridge will be constructed to bring that community to seven bridges. And this will be creating a great new opportunity for housing and access to public open space and community shopping in our area. We're very happy and excited about this project and hopefully you'll be seeing some activity here soon. Next is our economic indicators for commercial real estate. Um, it is no surprise that we have seen an increase in vacancy rates in all three categories. The retail market has permanently changed and like many of our neighbors, we are seeing some of the large anchor stores making adjustments, closing footprints, and, and, and looking at different opportunities. Um, However, we're, we're trying to get ahead of this is I will be later this month attending one of the largest commercial real estate conferences of the year um, to meet with the commercial real estate's top deal makers and retailers to get Woodridge in front of these folks. Uh, we have a lot of work to do here. Um, and the first step is, is meeting all of the, the players that are, are leading this industry and Woodridge will have a, a voice here in the next couple of weeks. So more to come with of how that, how that works out. Um, 
Our office and warehouse market demands, um, you'll see that there was a slight increase, but really it was due just to some new product being brought onto the market that has not um, been backfilled yet with, with tenants. But the increase has been due to slowing down in the market because of the higher interest rates. But we do feel that we are the strongest in this area. And we uh, will be able to announce in the following months those new buildings that we have brought on. Um, we will have some new tenants here, so that will be exciting to share with everybody. So we continue to still have interest for future development, um, particularly with tenant expansion and relocation to our industrial parks. And we feel um, that we are still very positioned well to maintain this market. Lastly, the office market is no doubt the elephant in the room. Um, I, we have one of our partners here, Choose DuPage. Greg, uh, we have some challenges here in this market, um, but we're no different than, than what everyone else is experiencing. I recently just read an article in the Illinois Real Estate Journal which quoted a recent study found that 24% of business owners are ready to reduce or eliminate their office space during the next five years. So. Um, for now, we're actively talking with our property owners and our brokers of our office buildings and staying open-minded about the possibilities of future reuse, but this is an area that everyone is still trying to kind of figure out what will be the long-term play. Um, so with that, we do have some new possibilities in our community, and that is our Lamont Road corridor. Um, after decades of sitting vacant, we are seeing reinvestment. Dr. April Finan is building her dream in Woodridge with the construction of a 6,500 square foot veterinarian clinic scheduled to open this summer. Next, we have the 216 square foot speculative industrial building by Trummel Crow. This construction is scheduled to be completed this summer and I am confident we will be able to attract a quality tenant in this corridor. To build a community's future, you need to have a vision. And the vision is usually outlined in the comprehensive plan. The village's last comprehensive plan was adopted in 07 and amended in 2015. In a post-COVID economy, we need a new plan that will continue to build on former plans, but also focus on setting a shared vision in the community for reinvestment in key sites to attract quality developers and expectations for redevelopment, recommending future land uses based on future market trends and needs of the community, and to establish a framework for branding and placemaking in key corridors. We set out our RFP on April 2nd, and we're hoping that uh, when the due date comes on May 17th, we'll have um, lots of interest from our consulting uh, community here to assist us in this next adventure. So more to come um, on that. Uh, the video also mentioned uh, an economic development strategy. So over the last several months, the village board and staff has had several study sessions to discuss the goals and objectives for the creation of a three-year economic development strategy. This plan is primarily intended to provide a guide for staff and village board that supports economic development for the next six months to three years. Identify key redevelopment sites and strategies for each site in our priority sites. In addition, attracting and retaining efforts to stabilize and encourage growth as well as attract new businesses. And lastly, to further explore marketing and branding of our community. This strategy will hopefully be rolled out and um, brought to the public here coming in the next coming months. And we just want to um, remind everybody that um, we we're looking for your input and we're looking to work as partners and to stay involved and to know what's going on in our community. You can go to our website. We have our current development page where we keep uh, active and updated. You'll also see on your table, we have a QR code. We have our full economic development report that has more statistics and highlights of what has been going on in the last year. And I want to thank you all for this opportunity to partner with you and, and speak to you about all the great things that the community has been able to, to bring um, this last year and more to come next year. So with that, I will turn it over back to the mayor and thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Kimberly. And I'm going to just take a quick moment and say thank you all for staying with us. I know we're going a little bit over, but we had much to celebrate. Um, we appreciate your time, but we're gonna go ahead and continue. 
Um, and, but first of all, I must say thank you so much to Kimberly and her team. They've been extremely busy, so dedicated, and a large, large task ahead. We don't do any of this alone, so I want to also give a shout out, and I see her here, um, to one of our partners in business, and that is Beth Goncher with Chamber 630. Um, Beth is here. Um, thank you very much, Beth. And many of our businesses know uh, the chamber and the partnership, but also Kimberly is serving as our liaison to uh, meet with the businesses um, through Chamber 630, and she's done an outstanding job and just have excellent feedback. Um, her dedication and leadership, along with her team, um, really is helping us to make dreams come true. So thank you very much. And our final presentation is from a distinguished guest speaker. Uh, we are delighted to have her here, and we're pleased to welcome Colette English Dixon, who is the Executive Director of the Marshall Bennett Institute of Real Estate at Roosevelt University. Colette has more than 30 years of experience, which doesn't seem possible, um, but in real estate management, and has a very wonderful um, CV, um, to be truthful. Um, her focus is commercial real estate investing, Prior to her role at Marshall Bennett Institute of Real Estate, she served as the executive director of PGIM Real Estate, where she oversaw the sale of more than 200 investment properties throughout the U.S. with a total value of more than $8.7 billion. We thank you, Colette, for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us here this morning and to share your expertise and insight. So we would like to give you a very warm Woodridge welcome. And Colette, please come and join us up here. Well, good morning. Good morning. Um, I actually think the rain was a good thing. It kind of kept everybody inside, right? <laughs> so uh, thanks, for, thanks for having me here. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me yes. reasonably well. It's kind of on the blink here. Are we doing okay? Well, I'm loud. <laughs> I'm loud. So we're going to have to go with that. Well, it's really great to be here with so many community leaders from both Woodridge and surrounding communities, and it's been a pleasure to meet the Honorable Mayor Gina Cunningham. And uh, thank you very much for giving me a chance to chat with you about something that's really very um, near and dear to my heart. I'm a member of the Urban Land Institute, and we're very focused on land use and how communities can thrive and what we can do in the real estate industry to help make that happen. So today we want to talk a bit about rel uh, res rel uh, resilience and sustainability and kind of what that means in the context of a community like Woodbridge, Illinois. So first of all, I think the question is, what is resilience? And at the end of the day, resilience is the ability of a community to withstand and recover from shocks, disruptions, disturbances, things like adverse weather events, as you had in 2021 with your tornado that showed up in the middle of the night. Who knew tornadoes could do that in the middle of the night? Um, and from, or from the loss of a major employer or from an external event like a pandemic. So then you go, what is resilience or it is sustainability so sustainability is a community's capacity to actually endure over time at this point Woodridge is going to be 65 years old that's an endurance and during that 65 years a lot of things have changed but you have to develop that capacity it's not innate it, it's not something that you just have you have to really work at it and it's about building infrastructure, it's about providing services, it's about understanding what your community needs so that when things happen over time, you can endure and you can continue to thrive. So, what happened here? Aren't those the same thing? I mean, some people do use those terms interchangeably and they're often confused because they are really closely related. The goals under each concept are really kind of overlapping. They both aim to create communities that can endure and thrive, and both concepts emphasize long-term well-being and the ability to adapt to change. These two terms are interconnected. So building resilience is often involved, often involves adopting sustainable practices and pursuing sustainable goals that can sustain a community. Well, these words get to be really repetitive after a while. 
and they're both really dynamic concepts, which really means that they're constantly evolving and require continuous reassessment. Both of them are complex, multidimensional, and encompass virtually every attribute you need to consider on an economic, social, or environmental level. Understanding the differences between these two concepts and how they work together is really important for a community to address all the many complex challenges that face them. And it helps community leaders like yourselves to guide policy and decision making around supporting long-term viability and near-term ability to adapt to change. Is it me? Here we go. So how can you tell the difference? It's not just definitional. It really has some pretty core points that you can use to go, is this something about building resilience or is this really a concept that will help sustainability? So the first one is kind of the differences in focus and goals. So sustainability is long term. It's about balance over the long term. It's about enduring and withstanding and hanging in there. Whereas resilience is kind of reactive. It's short term. It is responsiveness. There's a difference in approach. Sustainability is proactive, as I said. You want to mitigate issues that you see coming down the pike. You want to get ahead of the curve. You want to be there when it happens. Whereas resilience is reactive to a current, current issue. You can look at the differences in how you measure the success of them. And unfortunately, sustainability tends to engage with the types of outcomes that it takes a long, term to figure, a long time to figure out if you got it, done, if you got it right. You know, if you're building for social equity, if you're building for economic prosperity, if you're building for environmental <laughs> impact, it takes a long time to determine if you got it right. Whereas resilience is response capabilities, adaptive recovery. You can determine pretty quickly if you made it or not. So longer term versus shorter term, immediate term, big difference in how you measure the success of these initiatives. Community leaders also need to balance their efforts to provide you know, both types of programming and policy commitments for their communities, which can be really kind of difficult in a time of change, political instability, um, impatient electorate. You know, patience is not the virtue of many of our community members. They want things to happen now. They want to know that you spent that money, what's it going to do? How's that going to work for me? What difference is that going to make in my life today? Not necessarily thinking about what's going on for the future. But you need to have these two considerations so you can balance that near-term success with those long-term needs. And no matter how you look at it, sustainability and resilience are tied together. Achieving sustainability can enhance re re resilience, and building resilience can contribute to sustainability. It's a flow chart, in and out. So what would we say are the foundations of resilient communities? Um, there was a recent study done that proposed that there are six core pillars for developing resilience. The first one, people. people are the core of all of this. And the power to get them to envision a community that can be resilient in combination with your leadership is really key to being able to achieve a resilient community. The idea of systems thinking is about understanding that these are complex, interrelated issues that are unfolding in our communities, and our, our communities are complex. It's not just a simple group of people who just live here. The people who work here, the people who come in to work, the people who leave to work. There are young people, old people, people with disabilities, people without disabilities. Our communities are complex, the issues that affect them are complex, and the answers are complex. You also have to think about being able to adapt. That's another keystone of being resilient because your dynamic adaptation is constantly changing. And some challenges are so big that it's really not possible to just simply adapt to that change. Sometimes you have to really pursue fundamental transformative change in order to develop that resilience that your community needs. And we talked about sustainability, but I think at the bottom line of it is courage. 
It's the courage of our community leaders to confront the issues that need to be managed to help our communities understand the importance of those challenges and to know that we have to be responsible for our own futures. This isn't something that we can just let happen to us. We have to work at that. So why is it important for communities like Woodridge to be resilient? Why is it important for any community to think about being resilient? In order for smaller communities to thrive and prosper and maintain their unique identities, you have to invest in building resilience that can have the long-term benefits, the long-term sustainability, and enhance the overall quality of life of our residents, who are the core of our communities. So I have to admit, before Jamie called me and asked me to come to speak to you, I think I've driven through Woodbridge three times. I've always lived further east. It hasn't been on my path. So I had to think about kind of what is this about Woodbridge? What is going on in Woodbridge? And I actually was very impressed by what I read, aside from the 65-year tenure, which in some respects make you kind of young when it comes to communities in Chicago. But you've been constantly growing since 1959. I mean, I don't think there's a census report that says you've ever lost population. That's pretty amazing. You're also a pretty young community with your median age under the age of 40, and you have a very well-educated community with more than 45% of your citizens having at least bachelor's degrees. You have a diverse community, you have a broadly represented community, and you have attributes that continue to attract new residents, new businesses, all that contribute to your community stability. So why is this important for Woodbridge? Don't you guys have it all already? Haven't you proven that you are sustainable and resilient? Well, yeah, but the future is still looming and we have to think about how we prepare for that too. So I think we have to look at a few things that can be important and it appears to me after all of the presentations today and your great video about what's going on in Woodbridge and the, com the com uh, comments about your community development efforts, you've actually got a lot of this licked. But you know, since I'm here, I'm just gonna go through it anyway. Um, so smaller communities do have to be concerned about limited resources, right? You can only tax people so much. You, can, you only have so much land. You only have so many tools that you can use to deal with these challenges compared to what larger communities might have. So you have to be cognizant of how those limited resources can be used to help build your resilience. And you're also likely to be more vulnerable to some of the shocks that can happen because you don't have the diversity or scale that allows you to spread out that impact. And often it, takes, it doesn't take much in smaller communities to really have a huge impact on the whole environment that you're working in. And resilience often strengthens social bonds and your cohesion within your community, which is obvious you're working very hard on with all the work that you are doing with organizations, with your cultural support, with honoring your history and honoring your diversity in your communities. But that co community co cohesion is really key. Um, small communities, resilient small communities are more attractive to businesses. I love the story about Home Run Inn having its facility here to build pizzas because someone thought this was a great place to live and a great place to do business. Continuing to build on that is really very key because it helps build job creation, it gives you tax base, it makes the community healthier. And so having that economic stability is a very key component of being a resilient community. And you also talk about cultural preservation. I love the Diwali pictures. It looks like that you are honoring the diverse cultures here and you're protecting those. And that is a very important tool for small communities to keep in mind. And then resilience often empowers, or actually totally empowers, smaller communities to take control of their own destinies. You definitely don't want to be subject to what external parties are telling you you should do. Being empowered because you know what's best for your community. It allows you to better navigate the challenges and help you shape the future of your community in a more proactive way. So what are the challenges for a community like Woodridge? Climate change. Um, 
that rain that we keep getting more and more of now, right? Changing weather patterns are really going to result in a lot of challenges for small communities and large communities. You know, rains, flooding. Um, who knew there was a polar vortex until 2017 when we had our first one? I'd never heard of that before. You know, we're talking about um, atmospheric rivers. It's weather's changing, and we have to deal with that. When you lose employers, that impact on community income, on community dynamics, the resources that that income would give to communities, you don't have as much bandwidth, as many options in smaller communities. So employer losses are really significant because they also impact the tools that you have. And often when you lose employment, you have an increase in social service demands that have to be funded from somewhere. It is, it's a balancing act. Resource limitations, we talked about those with municipal financial resources. Well, Woodridge seems to be doing great with that. But with most community revenues coming from tax base, be it sales taxes or real estate taxes, anything that negatively impacts that impacts your ability to provide the services and fund the resources that your community needs. That is always something you have to keep in mind in smaller communities. You don't have other pockets or you know, an endless pool of other pockets of revenues to actually tap all the time. And so as we saw from the mayor's presentation, you know, Woodridge is really making a lot of investments in its resilience, which I was really impressed with. You know, your financials are strong. You're providing the sort of resources to improve and maintain your community infrastructure and your facilities. Your social challenges are being addressed by adding social service resources, and there's a whole community education about the practices and policies of the village and the police department. And congratulations to the new police chief, a job I would never want to have. <laughs> but definitely respect the work you have to do. You have plenty of intergovernmental partnerships, and that's within your community and externally to your community that help provide services and opportunities for your citizens. You support the maintenance of your housing stock and the expansion of your housing stock. And I can't really emphasize enough how important that really is to building a resilient and diverse and sustained community. So many communities struggle with how to expand on their housing stock. There is so much tension around, do we, can we do it rental apartments? Do people who live in rental apartments really care about our community? What kind of housing do we want to provide? Do we want to have only single family housing? Woodridge has made a commitment to a diversity of housing to address the fact that you have a diversity of people at different levels of income and different levels of commitment of like, you know, aging in place. I don't want this big house anymore. I love the new product that's being developed to help address some of those things to keep your community engaged and to allow it to grow. And then you have your increased community outreach and engagement to everyone to help make your community and your neighborhoods and your school safer. And those efforts are going to support the village's ability to bounce back from challenges and disruptions, but also lend to the long-term sustainability of this community. So how has Woodridge actually exhibited its resilience? And you know, I don't really want to harp on negative things, but I would say that an incredible example of how resilient Woodridge has been, and I think is really maybe a a key to how Woodridge will continue to be um, a resilient community and be sustained over time is how it managed to recover from its tornado event in 2021. I remember hearing about this and seeing the pictures and kind of going, oh my God, I mean, as I told you, I've only been through Woodridge like three times in my life. And I really had no idea how this could happen. And it just really struck me as being very scary. But what really happened in Woodridge though as a result of it is that you showed that as a community you were resilient. You had the resources, the community cohesion, the ability to immediately respond. You had community support that continues today as I was hearing about the fundraisers that are going to be going on to help support citizens in the community who haven't quite yet found a way back into their homes. You had coordination between your local government, the, the county, the state, the feds, to actually talk about recovery, rebuilding, reconstruction. You provided mental health services to those people who were affected by that trauma and to help give them the sort of support and encouragement to kind of hang in there and say, we're gonna go through this together. 
And then you also got involved in some long-term recovery planning. So you're looking at the ongoing needs of the community. You're implementing measures to actually enhance your resilience against these things happening again. You assess these vulnerabilities, you assess these challenges, you create efficiency so that next time it happens, you can bounce back once again. This shows that Woodridge in its 65 years has determined that it wants to be a resilient community and that you have done everything to build that strong community spirit. So what's the bottom line here about your being a resilient community and about the importance of resilience? Truly robust community resilience should engage and benefit all community members and consider all the challenges that a community is facing and can face. But people are at the center of community resilience building. You can't do it without them. But there is no single right approach for all communities due to their very social and economic conditions and the different things that may be going on with them. So Woodbridge, Woodridge is likely to face new challenges. Um, as you know, your community changes, your citizens change, you grow, there's always something new. But being aware of these challenges and preparing to respond and adapt to them is going to help your community continue to be the vibrant and attractive community that it has been for 65 years and will be for another 65 years. So congratulations on being that resilient community that's building its ability to sustain itself and to continue to provide the sort of space, business location, and community that you love. So I applaud you for that. Thank you very much for allowing me to come today. Um, if anybody has any interest in learning about our real estate programs at Roosevelt, there are some flyers on the front. I can't leave without a commercial for that. Um, <laughs> and thank you for inviting me to be a part of this important program. Um, it's been a pleasure to meet so many of you and all the best. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, Colette, uh, for the great insight and inspiration. I, I took a lot of inspiration, and um, we just have a little something to say thank you oh, thank to you. you. Uh, so it is a certificate of support. Oh, thank you. Um, our community has made a donation to the Marshall Bennett Institute of Real Estate. So that is for you on your behalf. Thank you, you very be, much. Thank you. And thank a little you. thank you from all of us. Oh, thank you so right, much. Thank you. It was it's a, pleasure. a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. It's always good when you lose some of your scripts, so I'm going, to, going to move this over. No, no, but you could have. It's, it's all over, so we're good, we're good. But thank you, thank you so much, Colette, for the inspiration truly in your words of encouragement and support of our community and um, our resilience, and, and thankful to every person in this room for making that happen and our neighbors throughout. So. Um, we appreciate, though, all that you had to say, and um, I hope that people will take advantage of your program through um, Roosevelt University. So I hope that we've emphasized enough about partnerships and doing good, and that coming together with our um, businesses and neighbors is so important. And I hope that we've inspired a little bit. I know I feel very inspired for new dreams, um, that uh, are ahead and, and all that we have that we're building and that we do have more work to do and that we will get there together. And we celebrate so much today um, and recognize um, you know, our business community and our neighbors throughout Woodridge that makes such a tremendous difference in all of our lives. It's important and one of my favorite things to do always at State of the Village is to celebrate and thank our local businesses who are celebrating right now this year significant milestones. This year we have six businesses that will celebrate their 25th anniversaries in Woodridge. And they are the Shoe Carnival, Clara's, A. Kevalo Plumbing, Central American Group, and Samuel Strapping Systems. We congratulate them and thank them all on their special anniversaries. And we wish them many, many more years of wonderful success here in Woodridge. 
So today we have accomplished our goal and our mission if each of you and your business can celebrate special milestones in our community with all of us. We thank you all for your time today. We look forward to seeing you next year at our event, but also throughout the community in the next few months and through the end of the year. As we said, we have much to celebrate and we look forward to celebrating that with all of you. And of course, we look forward to building dreams with you right here in Woodridge. There's many, many thanks to give, so I'm gonna give some shout outs. First of all, thank you so much to Seven Bridges Golf Club for the wonderful um, uh, breakfast this morning here and letting us host this wonderful event here. To Don Rogine and the team, to our um, photographer, Craig Stilwell. I don't know where Craig is, but he's been all over the room. And oh, there he is. Thank you so much, Craig. As a neighbor um, and a kind neighbor, we thank you so much for doing this on behalf of the village and our community. Um, our village team and members from our the village team, could you just stand for a moment? Because I do want to make sure to say thank you so much. And I want to highlight Jamie here, who's been so wonderful in putting all of this together. Um, and this is not an easy feat, let me just say. Um, she was working on uh, the script and everything till seven o'clock last night. Um, with me and I can't thank her enough, but I'm gonna read off here um, some names that I'd like Jamie to stand up for a moment. Um, I know she doesn't want to, but um, <laughs> it's really wonderful for us to say thank you. And of course, Al, Leslie, Lisa, Andy, Jake, um, Heather, Peggy, Chris, Kimberly, Sam, and Bob. A job well done, everyone. Um, thank you so much for doing all the great works at the Village of Woodridge every day, day in and day out. Our team just is incredible. We are very, very fortunate. We thank Colette, we thank Kimberly for being such a really fantastic um, colleague who's really kind of just jumped right in. Um, and taken all the experience that she has, and she grew up right next door in Darien, um, but she comes with a love of the community. And um, you can see that in all of her work, along with everyone else at the Village of Woodridge, just always going above and beyond. Um, so with that being said, we thank you all again, but I don't want you to leave yet because we have some wonderful raffles that we want to give. We have four raffle prizes. So with Jamie's help here, Maybe I could ask Mike Adams to come up and help us. <laughs> right. All right, the number? Okay, go ahead. I'll help you read it off, Jamie. Sure. Okay, the first number, the first number is 372-083. 372-083. So we have a wonderful Cinemark movie passes and uh, dinner at Legends Grill and Bar right here in Seven Bridges. So come on up, Simon. You want to pick that? Ready? Okay. Three, seven, two. Zero eight one. Oh. Wow. 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 So this is also Cinemark movie tickets and a night out at Ike and Oak right here in Seven Bridges. So there you go. Congratulations. Yes, absolutely. Debbie, you want to the next one? Okay, hopefully we have some golfers in the room. Yes, hopefully some golfers. Okay. Three seven two one zero nine. Going once. Nope. Going twice? Okay. They lose. Um, three, seven, two, one, five, zero. <laughs> so, Karen, we have a Village Greens Golf Club foursome for golf. <laughs> Congratulations. Presentations this morning. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, pick the last one for us. Okay, last one. Thank you. Okay, three seven two zero nine seven. Right here. 
Yeah. Oh, Don Ritter. Don Ritter, how about golf at Seven Bridges Golf Club, a foursome? Congratulations. Yes, we're so excited for you. Oh, here, he's going to want your picture. Okay. Congratulations. Well, that is, congratulations to everyone. Thank you so much. Please have a great day, and thank you for making our dreams come true. Take care.